Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, hearty welcome to you all to worship. This is St. John Lutheran Church in Louisville, Kentucky, and we are a grace-based, Christ-centered community seeking to share the good news and what we do and what we say. And uh, today is supposed to be the 19th Sunday after Pentecost, but you know what? Um, we were going through the Gospel of Mark, and the Gospel of Mark was getting rather serious, and it's going to be serious for a few more weeks after this. So uh, we decided to take a break and do angels today. <laughs> So today we are celebrating St. Michael and all angels. It is, this is the feast day of St. Michael and all angels. We'll be talking a little bit, about, little bit more about that later. Uh, a few announcements. First of all, we got a uh, email from the Synod this week after, after the deadline for our slides. And um, the uh, Southern Ohio Synod uh, has requested um, that we pray for Springfield where our university, Wittenberg University is, and uh, many other good folks are. Bishop Suzanne Darcy Dallahunt uh, asked for prayers for um, Springfield and the entire state of Ohio in the midst of many uh, bomb threats and death threats in that area. So uh, we'll be doing that uh, during the prayer. So I'll just have a, a brief time. I'll say a prayer for, uh, uh, for Springfield and its surrounding area. Um, please follow us on social media. Uh, I think we got a couple more subscribers here, 47 to 45. We were back in the 30s at one point, so good deal. And, uh, and uh, share those with your friends and family. We are at 150 invitations or stories about St. John, actually 153 now. So we have 47 to go by Christmas, okay? Don't let up. Don't let up. You're doing a good job. Pastor uh, Bishop Tim Graham's installation is at 2 p.m. on October 12th. I will be driving up. Uh, at least one person will be coming with me. If you want to come to the bishop's installation, uh, please let me know, and we'll go together. Oh, all right. You may have noticed uh, that Mike uh, Murray has put some uh, planter boxes out front of the church, and we uh, the kids put some flowers in the boxes, and the flowers bear made it squeaked through the drought and now have some water but they probably could use some more fine flowers in them so if you are a green thumb and like to do flowers please bring some and plant them in the flower boxes out front uh, October chili cook-off is October 13th uh, two weeks from today and sign up in front of the deal hall kitchen door it's coming it's coming to be a big big old thing we got seven people signed up uh, to try their chili. Blessing of animals will be next week. If you wish, uh, you may send in or bring in a picture of one of your pets or animals. We will say a prayer of blessing for them. Um, if you forget, then you can write the animal's name on a card and we will include them in the prayers. And if you want to bring your animal in person, you can come after church and we'll do that outside. But that will be from, I think, uh, like after church for about half an hour, an hour, yeah. Okay, also October 13th in two weeks, along with the chili cook-off will be Halloween cards. We'll be signing Halloween cards for our children and youth. Um, yes, and one more thing. We have a new hymn today. This is uh, a kind of reflective hymn. We'll be singing it uh, right after the sermon. It's on page 12 of your bulletin. And I will ask Deneen to play the tune for us, and then we will see how it goes singing it all together. Let all mortal flesh keep silence. It's uh, number 490. 490 in the ELW. Oh, oh okay. Thank you. 
Okay, here we go. Let all mortal flesh keep silence and with fear and trembling stand. Ponder nothing earthly minded, for with blessing in his hand, Christ our God to earth descending comes full homage to demand. Does that sound all right? You got that? Yep. All right. So let us uh, take a brief moment, uh, and Deneen will play us uh, a prelude while we prepare our minds for worship. Please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercies endure forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin and come to God for healing. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have honored you with our lips, but have harmed our neighbors with our tongues. With cravings at war within us, cause conflicts and disputes. In our desire to be the first, we make distinctions among ourselves. We place the needs of the poor and the suffering last. In your great mercy, forgive us our sins, Draw near to us with grace in time of need, and turn us to follow in the way of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By grace you have been saved in the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share the peace together. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
vast domain, everlasting is your reign. Hark the glad celestial hymn, angel choirs above of our raising, cherubim and seraphim, in unceasing chorus praising, Well, the glad refrain and the white robe parties follow, and from morn to set of sun, through the church the song goes on. Holy Father, Holy Son, Holy Spirit, three we name you. And so only one undivided God we claim you and adoring bend the knee while we own the mystery. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you have wonderfully established the ministries of angels and mortals. Mercifully grant that as Michael and the angels contend against the cosmic forces of evil, so by your direction they may help and defend us here on earth. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, whom we worship and praise with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my silver and my gold, not a might would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose. Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Be seated. It is time for the children's sermon. I have a box here. There are things in my box. Yeah, no, it's light enough. Oh, Thank okay. you. Thank you very much for your help. You coming up, Chloe? Come on. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. No. Yes, yes. They're going to do it. They're going to. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Okay. All right, all right, all right. So, um, so I have something in my box. This is what I have in my box. It's a pumpkin. Is this a nice pumpkin? Is it a nice pumpkin? Does it look like it's going to be nice to you? Uh, it can't be nice or not nice. Yes. Does the, is the expression a nice expression? The pumpkin is having a good time, but not, not, not one that you're going to have either, right? So this is, this is for Halloween, right? Yeah, okay. And um, do, you all, do you all have your Halloween stuff out yet? 
You do? You do? Not yet? Okay. Do you know what you're going to be? You know what you're going to be? You figured out what you're going to be? Cookie Monster? Uh -huh. Yeah. All right. Comic Super. Oh, okay. Comic Superhero. Now, which do you think is stronger? A Halloween creature or an angel? Yeah. yeah. Think so? Angel? This is actually, uh, this is a kind of a special angel to me because I found this angel while I was vac on vacation after I started uh, seeing my wife and we started seeing each other and I got this for her cr for Christmas and it was kind of cool. I liked it. Makes a little sound. Christmas angel. Oops. Did it go? Oh, there we go. So there's, we're going to talk a little bit more about different kinds of angels, and that's going to be going on for the whole rest of the service. You know. um, we're going to be talking about a variety of different kinds of angels. Most of the angels that we see are like this, right? In our pictures, we have a nice person with wings on the back, and that sings. We'll be getting back to that in a little bit, too. Here's another kind of angel. I'm going to show you another kind of angel. In the gospel lesson for today, Jesus talks to some of his followers and his friends whom he has sent out to uh, share some very important, uh, some very important to do healing and to, uh, and to tell people that God, are, God is close. And the word in Greek that is used for a message is angelion. And the word in Greek that is used for a messenger person who carries a message is an angelos. See, angelos, angel, angelos, angel. So all of us are sent out from the church to do things that show God's love to the world, to tell the truth and to be compassionate and sometimes to invite people to be nicer than they're being, right? All right. And when we do that, guess what you are? Angel. Okay. All right. Let's say a prayer. Dear God, we thank you for all of the good things you give us. And uh, even those which we call angels that come to us, whether they be beings of spirit or of body, we ask you to help us watch for them and to be a part of their work. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You want to put those in here? You mind that? Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Here we go. First reading is from Daniel, chapter 10, beginning with verse 10. A hand touched me and roused me to my hands and knees. He said to me, Daniel, greatly beloved, pay attention to the words that I am going to speak to you. Stand on your feet, for I have now been sent to you. So while he was speaking this word to me, I stood up trembling. He said to me, do not fear, Daniel. For from the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words have been heard, and I have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia opposed me 21 days. So Michael, one of the chief, chief princes, came to help me, and I left him there with the prince of the kingdom of Persia, and have come to help you understand what is to happen to your people at the end of days? For there is a further vision for those days. At that time, Michael, the great prince, the protector of your people, shall arise. There shall be a time of anguish, such as never occurred since the nations first came into existence. But at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, 
and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Let us read responsively the psalm of the day. Bless the Lord, O my soul, that, that all, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all God's benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. Bless the Lord, you angels, you mighty ones who do God's bidding, who obey the voice of God's word. Bless the Lord, all you hosts of God, you servants who do God's will. Bless the Lord, all you works of God, in all places where God rules. Bless the Lord, O my soul. The second reading is from Revelation chapter 12, beginning with verse 7. War broke out in heaven, and his angels fought the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought back, but they were defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. The great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven proclaiming, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah, for the accuser of our comrades has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. But they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, for they did not cling to life even in the face of death. Rejoice then, you heavens, and those who dwell in them, but woe to the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you with great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting offering forgiveness comfort and joy listen listen god is calling through the word inviting offering forgiveness comfort and joy jesus gave his mandate share the good news that he came to save us and set us free listen listen god is calling through the word inviting offering forgiveness comfort and joy the holy gospel according to luke glory, glory to, to you, you o lord god. the 70 returned with joy saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Listen, listen, God is calling through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Help us to be faithful, standing steadfast. 
walking in your precepts, led by your word. Listen, listen, God is calling, through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Yes, the season of Halloween seems to be upon us. You drive down the road and some people have already put their ghosts out on their front lawns. You walk into Home Depot or Lowe's and there's a 15 foot tall skeleton glaring at you with red glowing eyes. And a 10 foot tall green witch with a loudspeaker in her chest going, yeah! <laughs> yes, it's Halloween time. Now, I said in the, uh, bull in the uh, newsletter for this month, that uh, it's my opinion that Halloween has a place in God's realm as long as we don't take it too seriously. Don't take Halloween too seriously, okay? Just... But if we let it be in the realm of pretend, then it gives us an opportunity to look at and grapple with those parts of the world and those parts of ourselves which are scary, which are ugly, which aren't pretty, which are creepy and we don't like to look at. But if we can engage those parts of ourselves and those parts of the world in the realm of pretend, then it teaches us how to engage those parts of ourselves and those parts of the world in reality. And that's a good thing, because you know what? We need to deal with the witchy parts of ourselves, because if we don't, the witchy part of ourselves is going to deal with us. Halloween. Scary and thrilling in some ways. It's akimbo. It's off kilter. It's weird. It's different. But I will tell you something that's even more terrifying than Halloween and more akimbo and thrilling. And that is angels. Angels are more terrifying by far than Halloween and more thrilling. Now usually we think of angels as these very good-looking young women or men uh, with, uh, with feathery white wings on their backs, conducting little children over rickety bridges that span deep and dark chasms, you see, or uh, looking over a child when she or he sleeps, or guiding worried-looking adults through dark and dangerous passages. And there is nothing wrong with that. Angels do have a protective role in Scripture. An angel comes to Elijah when he's fled into the desert in terror of Queen Jezebel and brings him food. An angel stands in front of the prophet Balaam uh, when he goes to curse the people of Israel as they're traveling through the wilderness. Um, an angel comes to Joseph and says, do not be afraid. We'll get back to that part in a minute. Do not be afraid to marry uh, uh, your fiance Mary, even though she's pregnant, because the child is from God, a protective role. My mother used to sing a song to us when we were children from um, an opera from the 1800s called Hansel and Gretel. It was about angels, and she'd sing, Now I lay me down to sleep, Fourteen angels watch or keep, two upon my right hand, two upon my left hand, and so on. I do think that angels watch over all of us when we sleep.
But angels can be terrifying. That's part of why they're such good guardians. In the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah has a vision of heaven, and there are all these angels around the throne of God. They are a particular kind of angel called a seraph. Now, a seraph is a singular one seraph, and then you have seraphim, which are many seraphs. Seraphim is the plural form of the word seraph. And so the seraphim are all around the throne of God, and they have six wings. With one, with two wings, they cover their faces. With two wings, they cover their feet. And with two wings, they fly. And they sing a song to God there in heaven. And it is a song you may be familiar with, because we sing it every Sunday when we have communion. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. They are so loud that the stone foundations of the temple shake terrifying do you know what the word seraph means literally in Hebrew fire serpent it's like it's like these are fire angels these are like fire breathing dragon angels isn't that cool seraphim and then you got cherubim cherubs and cherubim uh, God puts a cherub in the gate of the Garden of Eden with a flaming sword so that Adam and Eve can't get back into the garden, go and eat of the tree of life, and then live forever on this earth like a couple of zombies suffering from the sin and the tragedy and the tyranny and the pain of this earth and never dying to rise with clean and open hearts into God's joy. So you can't have that. So there goes this seraph standing with a flaming sword in the front of the Garden of Eden, terrifying. Cherubim, God rides on the cherubim like we ride on a horse. God rides, and the, and the cherubim have like four faces. They have a human face, an angel face, a lion face, and an eagle face. And tradition has it they have eyes, 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 eyes all over them. Terrifying. It is angels who bring about the great overturning of the world in Revelation where everything we know, everything we understand is turned upside down in order to make room for God's new ways. Angels are thrilling. They're thrilling and they're different from the way we think. An angel comes to Mary, the angel Gabriel comes to Mary and tells her she's going to give birth to the Christ child. This may not have been the most welcome news to a 15-year-old girl in uh, first century Palestine where being having a baby out of wedlock was dangerous and uh, difficult. But sooner rather than later, she sings. These angels, they sing, you know. The angels in Isaiah sing. Mary sings with the message of the angels. She says, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. He has cast the mighty from their thrones and lifted up the lowly as filled the rich, uh, filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has scattered the proud in the dianoia, the delusions of their hearts, the lies and arrogance that they tell themselves. thrilling and strange. The angels come to the shepherds in the Christmas story. An angel of the Lord appeared before them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were terrified. And the angel says, do not be afraid. There's a reason why angels have to tell you every time they come, do not be afraid because they're really scary. The angel tells uh, the shepherds, again, a strange story that the Messiah has come and it's good news for all the people. Not just uh, the Jewish people and not just uh, the Gentile people and not just the Romans and not just the people in power and not just the people out of power. All the people. And there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts. The word host in Greek, stratia, same root as the word strategy, stratia. It's an army. It's an angel army. There is an army of angels that have come to meet the shepherds. Now, most of the time, 
in those days, people expected an army of angels to come. Um, some people, many people expected an army of angels to come at some point or other and throw off the Roman occupation, get rid of all the Romans by whatever means necessary, and plop the, uh, the nation of Israel in its place. So Israel would be the supreme nation. Israel would be the superior culture that the Romans claimed they were, but no, really, the Israelites were the supreme and superior culture, and they would enforce their ways upon everyone else by means of the sword. But God knows differently than we do. God thinks differently than we do. God sees differently than we do. And God did not want the people of Israel to be enslaved in the illusions of superiority, to be bound by the chains of supremacy. And so the angels do not come and destroy and kill. They sing instead. Could it be that singing is more powerful than illusions of superiority? Could it be that singing is more powerful than destruction without mercy? Akimbo and off kilter are the angels. Thrilling. An angel comes to Jesus when he is struggling in mighty agony on, uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane, thinking about what's going to happen to him at the cross and gives him help. And an angel, angels come to Mary Magdalene and the women and announce the resurrection of Jesus. Angels are far more thrilling, far more scary than Halloween. Now, in our Bible passage for today, we hear about a couple of angels, particularly Michael. Michael appears in the book of Daniel, and I don't have time to go into the whole business about this passage, but basically, Michael has helped a messenger, perhaps also an angel, who has come to Daniel and was having trouble coming to Daniel. So Michael has come and assisted in this message being sent. In other words, the power of God, which angels wield, the goodness of God will get God's messages to us even when we can't hear, even when something's in the way. In our second lesson for today, there is a war in heaven, which is different, I think, from the war in heaven that's supposed to have happened according to tradition before the world is created. There's another war in heaven, and Michael overcomes Satan and throws him down out of heaven. In other words, the power of God that angels wield, that we see, that Jesus shows us um, in uh, the Gospels, the power of healing and the power of hope and the power of forgiveness and the power of life is deeper than any evil. Even the most horrific and demonic. In the Gospel lesson for today, we don't see any angels, particularly, at least not of the sort we're accustomed to, not the cherubim or seraphim, but perhaps another kind of angel. In the verses before the gospel lesson for today, Jesus has sent out 70 of his followers, everyday people, not the 12 apostles, just everyday folks like you and me, sent them out to bring a message, an angelion, to everyone. And that message is the same message Jesus has been proclaiming along with his healings and his forgiveness and feeding of thousands of people and raising of the dead. He says, change the way you look at the world, the realm of God, the hope of God, the power of God is close, not far away, close as breath. So they go out doing this and they come back and they're very excited because the demons submit to them. Not only have they been a part of healing people, but people who have had demons, they've been able to throw out the demons. They're very excited about this. Jesus says, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. So the power of God that you wield 
when you do anything that reflects the love of God and the healing of God, forgiveness of God, the life of God, that power is deeper than any evil. And when you use it, you are an angel. So we have three kinds of angels listed today. We have the seraphim, the fire-breathing dragon angels. We have the cherubim, or the big old wings and eyes and eyes and all over them. And then we have the human beings, you and me. Also another kind of angel. Now, Jesus says, don't get all excited about all the wonderful things that God does through you. Okay? Don't be putting a notch in your cross for every miracle you make happen or every God moment that you see because you're not going to see them all. And sometimes you're going to feel like the good you do in this world, the efforts you do to grow, the things you want to offer to the world or in to grow in yourself or in your family, all that is going to feel like a drop in the bucket, like nothing, like it doesn't matter. And sometimes your eyes will be dimmed and your mind will be stilted because we are human beings and we're sinners and we're broken. But God still works through us. Indeed, sometimes God works even through our brokenness. We may not have fire like the seraphim, but we got brokenness. And we can love in the midst of that. Don't be counting them up. Just rejoice in the fact that you've been swept up into the arms of God's embrace. Rejoice in the fact that your name is written in heaven, that you are a part of the company of angels, that heaven works through you, not only waiting for us beyond the grave, but active and powerful in this world right now. Cherubim, seraphim, human beings, far more scary than Halloween and thrilling angels. Sixth winged seraph, 
cherubim with sleepless eye, veil their faces in the presence, as with ceaseless voice they cry, Alleluia, 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 Lord Most High. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please sit or kneel for the prayers. Drawn together in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray with confidence for the church, God's good creation, and all who are in need. We pray for the church and its leaders, for council members and music ministers, deacons, pastors, and bishops. Make us faithful messengers of your love in a world hungry for good news. We pray for all who question their faith. Fill our dry wells with your living water and reassure all who doubt of your boundless grace. Let us accompany all in discernment with open hearts and tender care. Bless our blessing of the animals next week and chili cook-off October 13th. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. We pray for the peoples of the world and for their leaders. Where conflict and violence reign, bring peace, especially to Ukraine, Israel, Palestine, Congo, and Sudan. Wherever there is oppression or discrimination, bring liberation. Guide all in power to protect those who are most vulnerable. Bless our elections in the United States with wisdom and clarity and preserve them from violence of any kind. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all who are suffering this day. Accompany people fleeing from danger and encourage all who help them on their journeys. Abide with all who are in prison or detention centers. Reassure them of your steadfast love. Pour out your healing power on all who are ill and any in need, especially those we name before you now, whether silently or aloud. <coughs> Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We offer thanksgiving for our beloved dead. At the close of our earthly pilgrimage, gather us with Michael and all the saints and angels into everlasting life in you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of peace, continue to accompany our siblings in the Springfield area and its leadership. For our congregations and ministries within the Springfield area, for schools, hospitals, first responders, Wittenberg University, and the immigrant community, especially the Haitian community. Bring an end to violence and rumors that are swirling. May the peace of Christ that surpasses all understanding become a reality within this and every city. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We entrust these and all of our prayers to you, holy God, in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Let us thank God for our many blessings with our offerings.
fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather the harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and dreams of all, unite them with the prayers we offer. Grace our table with your presence, and give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, source of every gift of your creation. By these gifts and with our lives, help us to serve one another and all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with the choirs of angels and the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, you alone are holy, you alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. We praise, we praise you, you, O God. God. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We, we bless, bless you, you, O God. God. We give you thanks for your dear son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. We, we thank, thank you, you, O God. God. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people or the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering within this meal among your people and throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your spirit, in your church, without end. Amen. Amen. Lord, teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Be seated. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. The body of Christ, given for you. body of Christ given for you.
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. You are holy, you are whole, you are always ever more than we ever understand. You are always at hand, blessed are you coming near, blessed are you coming here. Your church in wine and bread, raised from soil, raised from dead. You are holy, you are holiness, you are present. Let the cosmos praise you, Lord. Sing Hosanna in the highest. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to our God. You are holy, you are holy. Evermore than we ever understand, you are always at hand. Blessed are you coming here, blessed are you coming here to your church, wine and bread, raised from soil, raised from dead. You are holy. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. Holy God, you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with the dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. God who made the earth and heaven, darkness and light, you the day for work have given for rest and night. May your angels guard, defend us, slumber sweet, your mercy send us. Holy dreams and hopes attend us all through the night. And when morn again shall call us to run life's way, may we still whatever befall us, your will obey. From the power of evil hide us, in the narrow pathway guide us, ever be your smile denied us. Guard us waking, guard us sleeping, and when we die, may we in your mighty keeping all peaceful light. When the quest red cold shall wake us, then, O oh Lord, do not forsake us, but to reign in glory take us. With you on high, Holy Father, throne in heaven, all holy Son, Holy Spirit, freely given, last three in one. Grant us grace, we know and for you, till we lay our crowns before you. And in word your 
Go in peace. Follow Jesus. Sharing Jesus through, through worship, worship, learning, learning caring, caring, and service. Thanks, thanks be to God. God.